Hello, everyone. Welcome to Enjoy the Book of Life. We are with Brother Dan Moffat, again with a treasured discovery, something that to him is more precious than gold or silver. So turning it over, what is your treasured discovery and why is it so precious to you? Well, one of the things that I've really enjoyed a lot as I read through the scriptures is just seeing how the person of the Lord Jesus Christ is introduced um, not just in the New Testament, but all throughout the Old Testament as well. And um, just from the very beginning of the Old Testament, uh, throughout the whole um, the whole Old Testament, there are so many different references to him. And you see how um, really the Lord Jesus is the central theme of the scriptures, not just starting with his birth and from then on but even before that and uh, you know I, I even enjoy um, the fact that history is divided into to two periods you know um, BC and AD and it's around the Lord Jesus yeah and yeah. you know it's it's interesting society is trying to change that you know and substitute <laughs> which is which seems like why do that but yeah they don't they don't want to obviously have the focus be on the Lord Jesus but for us as a believer to be able to go and and see um he's he's the central theme of the Old Testament as well mm. not not just the New Testament and um to be able to then look for that and just look for things that connect to him and some of um as we talked about before have to do with his work of redemption or a refuge that we we yeah. talked about. Um, and some of them may just be more about his character and how he communicates and inter, um, interacts with people at different times and how he speaks to different people and um, communicates in a very personal way sometimes. Hmm. Um, I mean, one of those, um, one of the things that would speak to that is um, the phrase the angel of the lord that's used and um yeah. speaking of you know if, as you read that you might just think oh well yeah the angel of the lord you know the lord has angels and, and he's one of them but but as you look at that closer throughout the old testament you find that the angel of the lord the angel of the lord is the lord jesus it's a pre-incarnate um uh, or yeah, um, visible connection of the Lord Jesus with different people and um, um, mentioned, I think, about 50 different times well, throughout yeah. the Old Testament. So, um, and interacting with a number of different people. And, and so, you know, that's more of a direct uh, view of Christ in the Old Testament, but then so many references to him too, uh, you know, so many prophecies about his birth and his life and his death and resurrection um, all throughout the Old Testament, you know, again, not just in one book or in a few books, but just spread throughout the whole Old Testament. And again, it can be uh, just very, uh, encouraging to look for that and to to realize you know that that was something that spoke of the lord and, and some of it um we know is the case because the new testament will tell us right hey you know right. that that thing that was written back in the old testament this is what that meant you know and it was yeah, talking about yeah. the lord here and you know he he might say himself well this is what the scripture said or paul the apostle or peter may say, this is what the Lord meant when he said this, you know? And so that's helpful, but obviously okay. there's a lot, even that um, we get to find on our own. Yeah, I, I like these these categories that you, you were mentioning. So things that were directly referenced, you know, where he says, you know, Christ was the rock, you know, is, is it, it spells it out for you, or he's, you know, likens himself to the serpent on the pole, or the manna in the wilderness and and he makes that connection 
uh, right. or, or someone, you know, the Holy Spirit in the New Testament make something, some explicit uh, example. And then you mentioned prophecies where it, it we see what was written in the Old Testament played out in the New Testament where the, the prophecy was fulfilled in in Christ's coming and his life, death, resurrection. And then uh, you mentioned uh, his his interactions with the angel of the Lord, um, but I, I think also in in a broader sense with with people. And then you mentioned almost uh, I don't know if if these would be technically types, but but almost symbolic, where we talked about the refuge and how he is a refuge, and and we see those connections. So I think those are really helpful, even just starting places. If someone, you know, listening is like, oh, I've never, I've never thought about looking for Christ through the New Testament. I'm sure there are more, but I think th that's in and of itself to say, okay, if next time I'm reading through the New Testament, where, where do I see references to the Old Testament? Where do I see these, where it says, this is what we, what we were talking about? And then looking for those prophecies fulfilled and and those sorts of things. So yeah, you know, that's that's very helpful um, in in uncovering these areas. Um, what would you say are some of your favorite? If I'm going to have to put you on the spot here, uh, if, when you're thinking of Christ in the Old Testament uh, areas that that really stick out to you. Well, I think um, one one area that really stands out certainly has to do with the sacrifices that were um, given to the children of Israel, um, particularly the Passover, um, something like that, that just really speaks so directly to um, the Lord coming. Uh, just as a um, not in power, but just in uh, simplicity and becoming one of us, and the spotless Lamb that goes to the uh, to the cross and pays our penalty. And mm -hmm. so, I think it'd be it'd be hard for that particular aspect to not probably be my favorite, but yeah. um, and. And it's just so amazing as you read through the Old Testament, then and understand that these sacrifices point to the Lord Jesus, and look at the volume of sacrifices that were yeah. made, and and then again to be reminded in the New Testament that in spite of all that, none of those ever took away sin. They all yeah. just pointed to the Lord Jesus, hmm. and it's like, that's incredible. Hmm. Yeah. And and all the different the different kinds of sacrifices. You know, sometimes we say, you know, he was a sacrifice, right? And and kind of leave it at that. But he he was a trespass offering. He was a burn offering. He, you know, all these different types of right. sacrifices were fulfilled. And we needed all these different pictures just to represent his one sacrifice. And I like how you also pointed to the multitude uh, of sacrifices and, and stories of, of, you know, I think of the dedication of the temple where, I mean, you, you read that, that, I mean, that was uh, some event. And like you said, it, it, it all just pointed there. There was, it, it was, it wasn't enough. Um, uh, it all just pointed to him. Uh, one that I, I really appreciate was, um, I I was going across. I I found the person of Nation. I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Interesting. He was the leader of the tribe of Judah in the wilderness journey, and uh, very wealthy. It it lists out what he donates to the building of the tabernacle. This great great amount. He was the first one to donate, and then his son is Salmon, and he is 
the one who actually marries Rahab, the harlot, which I never quite realized. I knew she married someone because she's in the genealogy right. of the Lord Jesus. But this guy was probably the most eligible bachelor in Israel. You know, he's the son of the ruler of the chief tribe of Israel, right? And the only thing ever written about Salmon in the Bible is in genealogies. It never says anything other than nation begot Salmon, right? But then they begot Boaz. And so right. here's Boaz, and he's the kinsman redeemer of a Gentile bride, right? A picture of the Lord Jesus. And um, in in thinking on on Boaz here, this idea of the redeemer, the redeemer needs two things to be able to redeem. He needs to be able to redeem financially, right? Boaz says, "I'll I'll buy everything," right. and that points back all the way to nation, this great wealthy ruler. But he also not only needs the the wealth to redeem; he needs the heart of a redeemer. And we look back a generation to Salmon, who married the Gentile bride out of Jericho, and and how he must have learned from watching mom and dad. And he had a heart for Ruth. And, and just looking at that, that the Lord Jesus, he was not only able to redeem us, but he had the heart to redeem us. And it just pictured in those three generations of, of men. And just, you know, that, that sort of thing, it, it, it really warms the heart. Seeing it in, in that 3D Old Testament story form, you, you get to see a little snapshot of, of who the Lord is. Yeah, and just when you think about the fact that we've been created in his image, any time that we're operating the way God intended us to do, then it becomes a somewhat of a picture of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Because yeah. that's who we look like. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it's that's nice. That that's in in the New Testament. You we get you what we might call the practical sections where it says like do this, don't do this, do this, you know, don't grumble, don't complain, put on mercy and love and joy, and, oh, you know, those sorts of things. And it, it um, the Lord taught me in those sections, what he's showing us is himself, because he would never tell us to do something that he isn't. Um, and And so when I see those, to see Christ in those lists, what you know, the Lord never complains, and that's amazing, you know, because he's he's working on sanctifying people like me, and and and, and how difficult uh, the task seems to be when we look at this world around us. But he he's never discouraged, he never complains, he's never anxious, uh, and all these things he wants for me is because it's like him. So it just I, I like that point too, that that we, you know, like the broken vessels with the light hidden, right? We're all like clay earthen vessels, but when when the light shines out, uh or, or when the fruit, just to mix metaphors, when the fruit grows, the fruit of the spirit, uh it it reveals the the branch that we're attached or the vine that we're attached to. Um, so yeah, I, I really like that point as well. Yeah. Um, this is, um, I think in the treasure discovery category, it, this is kind of a, uh, one that keeps on giving, right? This is, this is something like you would say, you're still finding these. You haven't. Mm -hmm. You haven't run out of, no. of finding <laughs> Christ <think> so. <laughs> in the Old Testament uh, specifically. Um, what is something that you do that helps uh, keep, you know, we, we like silver, if you, if you don't polish it, it starts to tarnish. And so these truths, you know, this idea that Christ, he's all through the Old Testament. What do you do that helps keep this idea polished and fresh in your mind? Well, I think partly 
this goes back and maybe reinforces the value of spending time in God's word every day and mm -hmm. and doing it in a consistent um, uh, structured way that you're moving and going through all of the scriptures. We would we would tend to uh, probably skip certain books of the Bible or uh, different areas if if we were just going to pick out, OK, what should I read today? But um, for me, it's been so helpful just to consistently go through the Bible, um, uh, read through the Bible in two years to um, every couple of years. I'm reacquainted with every passage in the whole Bible. Okay. And it reminds me of things that I haven't maybe thought about for two years, mm -hmm. but I'm so glad it does. And I get to enjoy it again. It's like revisiting an old friend, you know, yeah. and it really is. And, yeah. um, and it's just like, you know, especially if it's something that's particularly meaningful, just uh, to have that just overwhelm you one more time, you know? And so mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm, I'm a fairly simple person, but just for me, just be able to do that on a consistent basis, I I know that I'm going to be reminded of things that I want to be reminded of. Mm, yeah, yeah, I think that's that's so good. Uh, there are those sections, and sometimes where it's like I'm doing my read through the Bible, and I get to that list, and it's like, do I just skip the next couple chapters or? reading through and i think this is good too where previously we talked about how you keep that uh running commentary where you can refresh yourself what did i see and then you're looking for new things or re to revise what you had written uh one time we were doing the bible study here um usually when we reach the end of a book i like to poll everyone what do y'all want to read and they wanted to do something in the Old Testament. They said, let's do Nehemiah. And so I said, great, let's do it. So we, we, we did Nehemiah and there we get to a chapter and all it is, is a list of all the people and all the sections of the walls and all the gates that they helped to construct. And we got mm -hmm. to it and they all showed up and they all thought we were going to skip that section. I said, no, we're spending the two hours studying this section. And it was one of the best studies we had going through and looking and, and meditating on the, just thinking about the different gates and, and what each one meant. And anyway, I, but it, it was something where I wanted to show, don't just skip all scripture is profitable. And, and like you said, having that systematic structured approach allows you to revisit those areas uh yeah. after time yeah yeah i i think there's probably a lot that i wouldn't if i didn't do that yeah yeah so yeah very good i think i think it's a good goal in especially going through those sections looking for the lord jesus i like those um categories that you gave us to get us started um if you're reading in the new testament find where it references the Old Testament. Uh, when you're in the Old Testament, find where it's pointing forward to the New Testament and, and find those connections. So I, I think uh, some really helpful areas for our own future treasured discoveries. 